Yo, 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 what's up all you burner stoners and potheads? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you v -v 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 vipers doing out there, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman. How the hell are you? Fantastic. Fan friggin' tastic. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> hey, everybody out there in the world, who are you smoking some big fat doinks while you're listening to the show? And Mrs. Weedman and I are about to get normal. And we're going to smoke some GG4 again because we love this strain. And we talked about it on the last week's episode, so I don't need to talk about it again. But just know, we love this strain, and I have a good amount of it, so we'll be smoking this, and among other things, too, while our, while we're recording these more and more episodes. But super stoked, Mrs. Wee Man. Go ahead and light that bowl up. I'm going to. Whenever yeah. I think of GG4, I think of, like, a jet airplane. So I'm <laughs> going to blast off right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Blast off time for Mrs. Wee Man. Hey, everybody out there. We're just uh, watching a new show right now. It's not new, but it's a new season, and it's the right <laughs> Righteous gemstones. Oh and gosh. oh my gosh. We got done watching the bear. We talked about that last week, but the righteous gemstones. <laughs> they are fucking awful. <laughs> they're, they, they're just rotten. Just rotten. <laughs> just rotten. Just rotten. Pass that bowl over here, Mrs. <laughs> Weed Man. Have more, but I'll wait. I'll pass Send it, it back. back my way. So go ahead and tell them about about the show. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we've talked about this show before. <laughs> and if you haven't watched it, you should. It is a play off of like uber like mega church Christians and all of the uh, big mega churches and their just life. All of all of the, the preconceived notions that we have of those people that you know they and the truth is, is that they're just humans. So this particular family. The three kids, there's two boys and a girl, and they're all vying to take over the mega church as their dad uh, is retired. retires. And so they are all trying to get a piece of the pie and figure out who's going to be running the show. And they're just rotten. They're rotten. absolutely rotten. I'm so it, rotten. It is, it, it's. We were we've been it's we've been, we've watched it the last two nights, the last three nights, Sunday, Monday, the last two nights, and fucking last night. I think I almost fell out of bed laughing. Oh my god! I was laughing so hard when 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 that shit happened to Judy. Oh my gosh! Judy is I, the, the, the sister. Yes. And she. Oh my god! She is just hysterical. They're they're all just hysterical. You have to watch it. There's yeah. nothing else to say. It's just so. <laughs> right? it's, they're so bad. They're so bad. And I don't want to ruin it, but I mean, last night when when she got that <clears throat> shot, I mean, I was f you and I were pissing in our pants. We rewound it to watch it again. Yeah, That's we had hard. to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like episode three or four I can't remember but we were fucking oh crying. Lord. It is a funny show. It's a parody of play, like I said, on big mega churches. And but the shit that this family does, and not so much the dad. He the tried. Dad, the dad was doing good things. And right. The mom and you know, but the mom passed away. And right. The dad's just time to phase out, and the kids are taking over. Are just taking and over, and they're just rotten. <laughs> but I'm always surprised that they're like rotten in front of people. They're not oh, just yeah. rotten like like behind the like you know. I think that we presume these Christian families can only be so good for so long, right? Right. Like they must be doing dumb shit at home. <laughs> They've got to be saying things that you know the rest of the world doesn't want to hear because they're human, right? They've got to make mistakes somewhere. Everybody does. But these these kids just are blatantly rotten rotten oh to the gosh. core and they're not kids they're like in their 40s and 50s the characters probably well, yeah. probably 30s 40s yeah like, yeah and they just i mean <clears throat> oh my gosh when they had the ministry uh meeting and oh my god and they had what, to go before like the council of yes, whatever all congregation the ministers that they're the, affiliated yeah. with and the awfulness they just like came out blazing <laughs> oh on fucking fuego i'm just gonna say there's a shoe fight yes that <laughs> is, if you watch nothing else, go to season two, episode three. So season three. And ep oh, season three? Yeah. Episode three and watch the shoe fight. <laughs> it's hysterical. Maybe watch 10 me minutes leading up to it. <laughs> Oh my god. I couldn't even believe my eyes. Oh ass. my gosh. I just kept on saying they're no way. fucking no so way. awful. They're terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't even watched it yet. You need to go check it out. I mean, it's just like it's it's on um now it's not called HBO anymore. It's called Max, which is weird to me because I grew up watching HBO. So it's like watching a new, you know, symbol on the screen is kind of weird. So but uh 
Uh, it is funny. It is a funny show. So we have something exciting we're doing uh, this Wednesday, <laughs> and we are going to see a burlesque show. But what type of burlesque show is it, Mrs. Weedman? It's a Star Wars burlesque show. <laughs> I'm super so stoked. So this is going to be really interesting. It's supposed to be funny and really entertaining. And What's it called? Star Wars Strip? Star Wars... No, no, Empire Strips Back. The Empire Strips Back. <laughs> <laughs> Reviews are good, so we'll see. Oh, dog. Kids are taking us yeah. for Mr. Weedman's birthday. Yes, early birthday gift. I'm yeah. super excited. We're going with O Dog, Polly, Shoddy, and, their, and, their and, and companions. Uh, yeah, and their companions and stuff. So it should be really fun. We'll we'll talk about it on the next episode, what it was. I am super stoked, and I told this to O Dog. I'm super excited <laughs> to see who is Darth Vader. Yeah. Well, maybe you'll never know. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just excited to see like what Darth Vader does, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> and what's now underneath that, yes, what's underneath the with, suit. <laughs> what's he gonna do? We're gonna see Darth Vader's legs. <laughs> <laughs> and actually if you know the movie, Darth Vader's legs are mechanical. Maybe it, not. Yeah, maybe not. We'll see. Not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Empire strips back. <laughs> I wanna see Darth Vader in a speedo. <laughs> <laughs> with just his helmet and I'm super on. stoked to go see this for last <laughs> show when it's all about watching a bunch of stormtroopers run around with their penises hanging out man it's gonna be so fun <laughs> well I don't know if they get nude well they have to wear like something right it, or they don't burlesque is like down well, they're probably Just wearing like, a little bit of yeah, they're probably, I mean, if they're running around in Speedos with, you know, the, the things are moving. Yes, 100 percent. Yes, we're, we're going to see things, things. <laughs> things that you should not see in Star Wars clothing. <laughs> That's going to be fun. We'll report. We'll report next week. Yes, we will. Sure. We will. You ready to get the show started, Mr. Wee Man? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay. Pot is mind boggling. Complicated, says chemist. Dr. Jeff Raber breaks down what we know and what we don't know. Cannabis gets you high. That much we know. I'm high right now. But what chemically happens when you get high and how these effects vary by person and cultivar and means of consumption remains a guessing game. I, I, I've read this article like two or three times, and I was kind of in the middle of, of doing this article. And you know what? I read it. The, the last time I read it, I said, this makes sense. There's going to be some people that are not going to say this article is correct. They're not going to say this article is factual. This is part opinion from Dr. Jeff Braber and part stuff that he has learned and studied. So um, it's much more complicated than marketing would ever want to hear. Much more complicated than most of us would really feel comfortable with or want to understand, chemist Jeff Raber tells. Inverse. Raber, the founder of the cannabis testing company, the Rec Shop, or the Workshop, W-E-R-C Shop, has published research on the huge variation in weed marketed under the same name and the inaccuracy of THC counts on cannabis edibles. And even when cannabis is labeled correctly, it's hard to predict that many effects it can have, he says. That's the problem with viewing marijuana through as, uh, he says here, a wonder drug. You know how I feel about the word drug when it comes to cannabis. That complexity is double-edged sword of how you can help so many different people in a broad-based set of alignments, Raber says. But then on the other side, how do you figure out which strain or strains can be the right one for you. In a recent interview, we talked about many unknowns, exciting possibilities, and coming changes for marijuana. Let's see what he has to say. On the internet, you'll read that one strain, now this is a question that's being asked of him, has a creative high and another is spacey. How legitimate is that stuff? Raber responds, what we can understand is all of those possible types of psychological responses are capable through cannabis. Each person may interact differently with the same chemical composition and get different responses, even from the same product. What's more, we know that the names that are often used to identify the products or the morphology in terms of what that the plant looks like being designated as indica sativa or hybrid are not always mapped directly to the same chemical composition. If you assume that the chemical composition of what imparts the psychological effects, then you'd have to know which chemical composition you're talking about to start to discern what psychological effects it may impart, 
In other words, I don't believe that we have a good way of saying this particular name of a cultivar will map towards those specific, sorry everyone, specific chemical compositions, which then mostly likely will elicit these desired psychological responses. Next question. So you wouldn't recommend review sites like Leafly. I don't think you can put much stake in that because it's coming from mislabeled, misidentified, and uncurated types of information. If you know, like we do, that there are a lot of misidentifications of the cultivar name, then how can we be sure that what's actually going into the database represents the same chemical composition every time? But the current situation is there's really nothing else. There's a giant vacuum. It's not satisfactory for people to say they don't know or understand, even though that's currently where we're at. We don't really know. We don't really understand. That's the unfortunate nature of reintroducing cannabis properly into society. How do we just start from here and start doing it better? This is the this is Braber's, uh, Raber's opinion. It would be, in my opinion, much better to say, let's not assign anything to it. Let's just say it's this, it's that, and we'll see what works for each patient. It's very unfair to tell, say, an insomniac who might require a specific composition, hey, this one I believe is this indica type. It's going to cause you to be sleepy. The patient goes home. They can't get any relief or any sleep benefits, and they believe cannabis isn't for them. It's not fair in in, the, in this doctor, this chemist's opinion. I, you know what? I've talked about this, and we think we've talked about this in prior episodes um, about strains and what you need and what someone gives you doesn't do what it's supposed to because it's perfect what he's saying in here that we don't know what we don't know. We don't un- know what we don't understand. Everybody's different. Everybody's body is different. Their endocannabinoid systems are different. Your receptors are different and what each strain does. I know there's certain strains that I really like, but I noticed a difference in certain strains uh, of the same lineage or the same strain. They do sometimes tend to be different. It's all depending on how they're grown, yeah. What if you're using nutrients, <laughs> organic. what It might have a little bit of that what was in there, but it might have a lot of something else that was in there that's more uh, in that plant. What about claims made by pot companies about what kind of high they give? I think it's unfortunate that marketing train is well ahead of the scientific data supported understanding. That is one of the major reasons the FDA was created back in the early 1900s when it was. It was not fair to suggest to people that this was going to cure or cause relief from these ailments when there was not substantial substantiation in a scientific sense behind it. Now, I, I, I don't agree with everything the FDA does. Trust me, and I know there's a lot of people listening out there and, and know that that the FDA is not 100% accurate. They stop a lot of stuff that could be – there's a lot of things wrong with the FDA, okay? So – Moving on. How much do we know about the psychological effects of specific cannabinoids and terpenes? I think in the extreme sense, you might be able to say very roughly, this may suggest that that might happen for some of the people, but we really don't have a good handle on any of that just yet. It's a good opinion. We can't say identify a terpene associated with helping you sleep. His answer, no. The problem is it's not one component. It's what the whole composition is. So when you see information that says the single cannabinoid or the single terpene is uh, purported to do this, it's really what they looked in that study. For example, linalu might make you feel sedated because that's what lavender does for some people. But there's a lot of linalu in a whole bunch of cultivars that no one would ever claim made them feel sedated. It's not the only thing on... So it's unfair uh, exploitation to say one thing that I believe does this. If it's present, then all of this must do that. That is definitely not how cannabis is working. It's a balance that's offered to your body and your body selects out of that consumption you that you offer it. What it needs to choose, how it's going to use it. That's a great line. It may not need as much depending on what you're in balance or out of balance with. Another great line. 
you also have to take a look at the specific route of administration. Now, this was key when I read this, and I read it a few times. So your route of administration, because oral is very different than inhaled, which is very different than topical, which is very different than sublingual, or if you're in Alabama, suppositories. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Alabama, I love you. Roll Tide. It's a very, very big, complex picture where you might need to understand 100 things at once to start to grab a handle on it. It's much more complicated than marketing would ever want you to hear. Don't forget, marketing is there to sell you something. Marketing doesn't do research. Marketing paints a picture of what cannabis can look like. You on a beach somewhere smoking a joint. You in the mountains somewhere smoking a joint. You in your house sitting on your couch with, uh, with a, uh, a glass of seltzer in a wine glass that's infused with THC or in a bathtub eating an edible chocolate. That's what marketing does. And they just look at data to put what they've read somewhere. They don't pay scientists to do the research. They just look up and they put it into their little nice little PowerPoint or marketing posters or, or the World Wide Web. So don't forget that. They're there to sell. They're just as much salesman as a salesman is, just in a different artistic kind of way. Um, let's see where I leave off at. Okay. I think we do live in a really fortunate time where we've got algorithms, computer software, and abilities to handle these types of complexities, but it's still exceptionally difficult. That complexity is a double-edged sword of how you can help so many different people in a broad-based set of alignments. But then on, on the other side, how do you figure out which strain's the right one? Uh, question. How fast is science progressing on these questions? The pace is starting to increase. At least I do feel that's the case. As we see regulations move forward and further, efforts to solidify the operations and allowing everyone to operate in this fashion, more scientists are jumping in. Like I said, we're lucky enough to have great tools nowadays to capture that type of stuff. I think we're going to go we're going to get there. I don't have a good idea about the timeline. It's definitely going to be a number of years until we have a better understanding, but I have no idea how to predict how long it might take until we have a really good understanding. It's something that's kind of unpredictable. Another question. How would you recommend consumers proceed in today's market? Try to to find a standardized composition. I think I think that will be the next thing we start to see from producers. I, so, I certainly hope it will be to where they can say, you can consistently rely on me. If this delivers to you, you can get it, it every single time. That has to be the next step before we have the conversation proceed. I don't know how you can discern as a consumer which compositions are standardized, but lab testing thorough regulations will really start to force that. We're seeing the draft regulations and the new laws, the trailer bill especially, and some other pieces in California that are going to start to dictate that you must be accurate with what you put on your labels. They're not seemingly going to be very tolerant of grandiose marketing claims without any sort of substantial, uh, a substantial uh, by them. So last part, does alcohol compare in complexity to weed? I don't think we're ever going to look at alcohol for broad-based psychological effects, but I think you can hear and see hints of it. It's possible that just the ethanol, the active ingredient, is so overpowering you can't see some of the subtitles. But different people will tell you, I prefer this type of distilled spirit. I prefer this type of beer. I only like this one. And hops have a lot of similar terpenes to cannabis. Distilled spirits certainly have similar things in that respect. So it's very possible that you can see a subtle difference in those effects because of the different chemical composition in the alcohol. But we are not looking at alcohol for therapeutic or psychological responses, and I don't think it has the same type of properties in the grand sense that cannabis does. Cannabinoids have a lot more to offer in terms of various types of psychological responses that they may elicit. I thought that was a real, like I said, I read it a few times and there was some controversial stuff in there. I know it. You eat it up. You beat it up. You read the article. We'll post it and tell me what you think about it. So leading on into alcohol, and I want to do some research on this more. So what are the facts about cannabis versus alcohol and what, what should we all consider? Mrs. Sure, Wee Man, tell sure. us about it. Yep. 
Drinking alcohol socially or for relaxation is part of human culture, but the legalization of cannabis has presented a new alternative to alcohol, and people are curious. <clears throat> the cannabis renaissance is causing many to explore its benefits primarily because of alcohol's proven toxicity, the damage it can cause to the body, and the risk of severe addiction. Cannabis users claim to get the same or a similar relaxing effect like you can have from drinking alcohol without the hangover. But most intriguing are the compounds found in the cannabis plant and their connection to our body that has doctors of science looking at it for uh, possible health benefits. Unfortunately, because cannabis is still federally illegal, obtaining the substance for medical research is challenging, and the little data that has been reported is conflicting. Is cannabis a safer or healthier solution for taking the edge off? Many agree both cannabis and alcohol are considered drugs and can negatively affect the brain with excessive or chronic use. This article compares the risks, benefits, and myths of indulging in either. Addiction versus dependency. Addiction refers to the biochemical change in the brain that causes destructive behavior in people who abuse substances and can't resist the urge to overconsume regularly. It has caused millions to lose their jobs, ruin relationships, and act abusively toward others. Dependency is the physiological effect substance abuse can have on your body that will likely cause withdrawals uh, to various degrees when you stop using it. Regular cannabis users often discuss the importance of taking tea breaks to avoid dependency and tolerance buildup. Insomnia, restless sleep, and irritability are typical withdrawal symptoms someone may have when trying to break free from cannabis dependency. Alcohol has a much worse outcome when someone becomes addicted and dependent. Addiction is described as having an invisible grip on your mind and body that overpowers your decision-making process and requires you to have more. It's a battle millions suffer from and succumb to. The World Health Organization states, Alcohol is toxic and psychoactive substances with dependence producing... Is, I'm sorry, alcohol... alcohol is a toxic and psychoactive substance with dependence-producing properties. Being drunk versus being high. The effects on someone's personality vary drastically between alcohol and cannabis. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, notes a correlation between excessive alcohol use and violence, whereas cannabis can have the opposite effect. Have you ever seen anyone initiate a brawl or act aggressively after consuming cannabis? I was just talking about that last night. Right, right. I was talking about that last night on the Grow Hour. Yeah, talk about I've. Yeah, I've. It just doesn't happen. I've gotten plenty of fights on alcohol. Never gotten a fight when I was high. Right. Never wanted to either. Mm -hmm. I'd rather talk it out and go smoke a joint with that person. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do these substances affect the brain? Well, both alcohol and cannabis are mind-altering substances that affect the brain's frontal lobe, which results in impaired cognitive function and altered behavior. Although the exact effects of alcohol and cannabis on the brain can vary depending on dose, frequency, duration of use, and a person's sensitivity to these substances. An article published by Harvard Medical School discusses a study by neuroscientist Stacy Gruber, a Harvard Medical School associate professor of psychiatry. Dr. Gruber's team led an investigation to study medical cannabis patients over a lengthy time. It documented effects on cognition, brain structure, and function, and found no change to white and gray matter in the brain. Studies show that cannabis consumption under 25 is not recommended because the brain is still developing and its effects have just not been studied. Uh, Well-documented clinical trials do confirm alcohol's harmful damage to your body and brain. Scientists at the University of Colorado reviewed existing image data on the effects of alcohol versus cannabis on the brain. Their findings linked alcohol consumption with long-term changes to the structure of white and gray matter in the brain. Use of cannabis, however, seemed to have no significant long-term effects on brain structure, according to the study. That's pretty insane. Yeah. Um, what about your overall health? 
Any doctor will tell you that eating healthy and exercising is the best medicine and everything else should be done in moderation. We talked about that last night, too. <laughs> <laughs> Many claims have been made, including one from Mayo Clinic, that alcohol consumption in small amounts may be good for stress and heart health. However, the National Library of Medicine warns that alcohol is ethanol, a toxic substance that, when ingested in large quantities, is clinically harmful and can cause death. The World Health Organization stated that the harmful use of alcohol causes a high burden of disease and has significant social and economic consequences. As for cannabis, while the long-term effects of use need more research, the most promising scientific breakthrough came in 1992 when the discovery of the human endocannabinoid system that was huge, and we learned that our body's health and wellness depend on it. Think of the endocannabinoid system as the body's command center that keeps our body in homeostasis by regulating other systems like the nervous system, digestive tract, brain, hormones, immune system, bones, skin, liver, and heart. The most remarkable part of this discovery is how phytocannabinoids, which naturally occur in cannabis plants, mimic the behavior of cannabinoid compounds found in the humo human endocannabinoid system Bang. it's like it's made for us made for us miraculously both human and plant-based cannabinoids function the same way and provide similar health benefits to the body more research is needed to verify how cannabis consumption can boost our endocannabinoid system as states legalize more research and clinical trials will become available Universities nationwide are already implementing cannabis-specific medical research centers, similar to the newly formed facility at the University of Utah. Well, can cannabis cause an overdose or death? No one has reportedly died from a cannabis overdose, but it doesn't mean that you can't overdo it. We know. <laughs> However, the statistics regarding alcohol are far more dire. According to the National Center for Drug Abuse Statistics, 385 Americans die of excessive alcohol use every day. Every day. Every day. What did they say? No one has reportedly died from cannabis. Well, anyway, alcohol causes 13.5% of deaths among 20 to 39-year-olds. But even worse, 10.2% of Americans aged 12 and older had alcohol use disorder in 2020. Wow. Decades of research and clinical trials have proven the dangerous effects of too much alcohol. While more research is needed to determine the adverse health effects of cannabis, it's worth noting that people have been smoking it for centuries without exhibiting overtly destructive behavior. So, is cannabis a better alternative to alcohol? I guess it all depends on who you ask. But I, me, this is not the journalist, I think it is. Yes, yeah. it is. Not it all depends. It, yes, it is. It is. <laughs> just imagine if the whole world just smoked weed. Be a better place. Yeah, at least like <laughs> at some point in the day. Not even smoke, just consume it. Yeah. Somehow. Somehow. Get those midichlorians in your body. Make them feel good. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to smoke some more. <laughs> Be careful with that. <laughs> nah. <laughs> you called me a stoner last night. For the first time ever. Yeah. Mr. Weedman was heading down to the studio to record the grow hour with Wes, and he was packing a bowl. I'm like, how about for me? He's like, all right. So he packs me a little chillum. I'm like, okay, that's it. I mean, he could be down here for a couple of hours. I, I, might, <laughs> I actually I might was. Need something I actually was. Like, <laughs> so I was like, what about? So we had the Dyna app packed. So I was like, oh, I'll take that too. And he's like, whoa, you're a stoner. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, I guess I am. And I walked off with my stuff. <laughs> there you go. Cannabis. This is, a new this is a new article. Cannabis is a miracle plant with the ability to change lives. From Israel to the United States, the number of studies of medical benefits of cannabis continues to increase and provide exciting results. The cannabis plant has over 100 known chemical compounds, but the two best known are CBD and THC. That's, I wouldn't say they're the best, but they're the two most known because we don't know about the other ones yet. 
We're, we're learning. We're learning about CBC, CBG, CBN, THCV, and all the other cannabinoids that we're going to discover. So they're my, uh, THC is my fave. It's the one I use the most, but I do like some of the other ones I just mentioned. So although CBD has a much shorter history than THC, Recent research studies have significantly increased our understanding of its medical benefits and the popularity continues to grow. CBD is a cannabis compound that does not have the primary psychoactive ingredient found in THC when it gets to the user high. The characteristics make CBD an appealing option for patients who are, not, who are looking to treat ailments such as pain, anxiety, psychosis, seizures, spasm, to just name a few. Okay, before I move on, you have to take CBD every day consistently to feel the effects consistently but if you use a, just a minute i'm talking about even one milligram of thc it helps to give that cbd a kickstart just i've talked about it before so cannabis is a miracle plant the cannabis plant is a miracle plant with the potential to treat countless debilitating conditions from epilepsy to multiple sclerosis. Cannabis can improve daily life for millions of people across the globe, and we need to recognize it for what it is, a medicine, not a drug. Please, please, please stop calling it a drug. It's a medicine. Thank you. Unlike other pharmaceutical drugs, such as opiates or benzo, oh man, benzos, I'm just going to call it, benzodiazepines. Cannabis does not require you to take another type of drug to combat its side effects, which we talked about yesterday on the Grow Hour. Although cannabis can increase your appetite, it will not force you to take another drug to feel better. I love it. As we know, and as you see commercials for drugs, Okay, take this pill, but it, there will be side effects of three or four or five or six or seven or eight things. So then they can get you to take more pills to combat those. Let's just say you get nausea. Okay, so now I have to take a pill that combats nausea, but that nausea pill actually makes me uh, makes me dizzy. So then you have to take a pill that's dizzy. Mrs. Weeman, am I right or am I wrong? You are right. Hundred um, percent. Although medical cannabis still has a way to go before we all can be, since it will be accepted as a medical treatment, <laughs> there have been a number of developments with regard to its medical benefits. We want to highlight seven of the known benefits. Epilepsy. Over the last two years, we've heard some incredible stories from the parents of children who were having more than 300 seizures a day. These children were being prescribed large doses of prescription drugs such as benzodiazepine. That kills people which did not solve the problem and had a negative impact on the child's demeanor. Yeah, you made the fucking kid a, 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 a zombie. Uh, the growing number of research studies and stories from the parents of children who have benefited from CBD had led to an influx in a number of parents using CBD as a treatment. Many parents have said that CBD is an effective treatment that has, been, that has reduced the frequency of daily seizures by more than 95%. Um, the benefits that CBD has for its patients with epilepsy has been a catalyst for the legal cannabis movement as we have seen a significant increase in the number of states that have limited medical cannabis markets which allow only strains with very low THC and high CBD. Crohn's disease. Researchers and scientists have said CBD could be an effective treatment for Crohn's. In 2015, researchers in Israel conducted a study which reported uh, significantly lower symptoms in 10 out of 11 patients with Crohn's disease. The study said five of those patients saw complete remission from treatment. Uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress uh, disorder, every veteran out there should be able to get free CBD or free cannabis for PTSD. It's been proven to work. It's been proven to help. It's been proven to give patients who suffer from PTSD. It slows everything down, including their mind, and calms the user. That's why we talked on the last article that no one fights on cannabis. Right. Pain. One of the most well-known and well-documented medical benefits associated with cannabis is the ability to treat pain. In 2011, researchers said that cannabis may help relieve pain for people suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. Acne. Uh, this is another, not just CBD. CBC is incredibly 
great for acne. A study published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation and National Institute of Health discovered that CBD can provide treatment for acne. Researchers used cannabis-derived cannabinol in human uh, humans, uh, spacious glands and concluded that CBD acts as an anti-inflammatory agent by inhibiting lipid synthesis. Insomnia. Also, researchers have found uh, tiredness to be one of the few side effects of CBD. This is a benefit for people who have trouble sleeping. Unlike pharmaceutical drugs, as in Ambien, which makes people fucking walk around the house like zombies and just do stupid stuff, CBD does not pose a risk of it for addiction and does not leave you feeling groggy the next day. Multiple sclerosis. Um, uh, GW Pharmaceuticals developed a commercialized Sativex, the world's first cannabis-derived product for treatment of spasticity due to multiple sclerosis. Sativex is sold in 29 countries. is also being developed as a treatment for neurotic, uh, neuropathic pain. It's in phase two of clinical trials. Yes, the pharmaceutical, you could probably get better CBD buying it from a farm somewhere where you know where it's coming from, not gas station CBD, please, and not vape shop CBD. Okay, you want to buy no. You want to see COAs. You want to know where it's coming from. You want to know where it's being grown. What's going in it? That I'm not saying anything bad about Sativex. I know some people that have used it. It's helped with seizures. It's helped with a few other things. But I'm just telling you, you could probably get better stuff than pharmaceutical stuff. Okay, because it's not synthetic. This was a great article. Uh, I posted it on Saturday on my uh, my uh, social media, and this is about Nikki Lawley. Connecting the dots with uh, with cannabis, or cannabis connecting connects my dots. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to connect a, a new dot here. Have a bowl. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay. Connect some dots, there, Mr. <laughs> Weedman. <laughs> I'll tell the story. Please tell us the story, Mrs. <laughs> Weedman. All right, Nikki Lolly, author, and this is her own um, story. Cannabis connects my dots. My name is Nikki Lolly, and cannabis saved my life. I am a traumatic brain injury survivor, and I truly believe that without medical marijuana, I may not be here today. Finding cannabis was a long and difficult journey for me, and I want to tell my story. Before my injury, I was a happy, well-rounded mother of two grown children, a grandmother, happily married to my partner of 20 years. I was a career-focused woman, a business owner, casino dealer, and pediatric nurse. I enjoyed travel and the outdoors, was an avid reader, and a social butterfly with a happy-go-lucky life. But everything took a dramatic turn one October day, a day that would shift the very trajectory of my entire life as I knew it. October 11th, 2016, was the last day I worked in my chosen profession of nursing. I was just doing my job like any other day, a normal 12-hour day working in a busy pediatric practice in Buffalo, New York, when my life was forever altered. On that day, there was a combative 10-year-old boy giving my coworker a hard time getting his routine immunizations. Every time my coworker would try to give the injection, he would flap his arm, and it became a very unsafe situation. I went in to assist and help the parent with a routine restraining hold to safely administer the vaccine. I got behind the parent and the combative 10-year-old, uh, got behind both of them. I instructed the parent how to restrain his arms, and I went behind the child and the parent to secure the hold. In an instant, things changed. The child tucked his chin and threw his head back, hitting me in the forehead. Oof. I was thrown backward into the plaster wall and back into his head and suffered a concussion, a mild traumatic brain injury. But there was nothing mild about its impact on my life. I immediately recognized something was wrong. I struggled with my eyes, <coughs> my left arm, head pain, dizziness, and was overall feeling sick. The physician who was working that evening sent me to urgent care where it was confirmed I suffered a closed head injury. They gave me a note to be excused from work for the rest of the week. I expected to get better, but I was not able to do my job anymore or continue pursuing my RN degree. I expected to get better, but I was not able to do my job anymore or continue pursuing my RN degree. I never thought my life as I knew it would be over. I never knew what chronic pain was since I had never experienced it. I never knew what an invisible illness was or how my credibility of being a healthcare provider would come into question. 
This once respected nurse was now suffering from subjective symptoms. That traumatic brain injury changed everything in my life. The most basic of skills was now impaired, from finding the right words, memory, working memory, balance, never-ending head pain, neck pain, losing the ability to count, and the incredible anxiety I suffered every day. I was so stressed out about not working, about all of the appointments I now had with different doctors and therapists, never-ending imaging, and nonstop replaying of the incident to all of my providers. My husband went from being my chosen life partner to being my full-time caregiver. He had to drive me everywhere. He had to do the household duties. He had to take care of the pets, and he had to make decisions for our home. I was in a system of hell and made to feel like I was crazy. It was almost like I had to prove that I was ill, that I was in pain, and that I was no longer the same person. It was a horrible and horrific experience going from respected nurse to being a crazy woman with, quote unquote, nothing wrong. After seeing over 50 medical providers, being on over 50 different medications, traveling to several different states, and even going to Canada for specialized testing and treatments, it took 18 months to finally get a diagnosis. I not only had a traumatic brain injury, but also cervical instability in my neck, which explains so many of my lingering symptoms. And while I was in dire agony, I would soon find relief in the most unexpected way. I discovered cannabis by accident in the most unlikely of places. My husband, trying to cheer me up, planned a trip to Las Vegas, but the trip was an absolute horrific experience. The flight, the airport, the people, the lights, and the activities were too overwhelming. The first four days of our trip, I was unable to leave our room. I just cried in agony and pain and was feeling so depressed that I was prepared to take my life. We were in a balcony room on the Las Vegas Strip. I dragged the end table over to the edge of the balcony and I stood on it, saying to myself, I just need to stop being a burden to the world. No one can live like this. It's not even fair to my husband. In that split second, I saw a mobile billboard driving by on the strip advertising, get your medical marijuana card in Nevada today. It went by a second time and I just laughed. While I was not an avid user of cannabis, I had occasionally consumed it at parties, but I never thought of cannabis as medicine. I never imagined it could help me. Well, that day, when my husband returned to the room, we decided, let's go and let's try it. I reluctantly got my medical card at a clinic and visited a dispensary. It was very overwhelming at the time, but the products I got that day literally gave me hope for the first time since my injury. After four days of not leaving the hotel room, I was able to function in a way I had not in months. For the first time, I found hope in something. Cannabis didn't cure me, but it gave me hope. It gave me something to focus on besides the despair my life had turned into. As I mentioned, I lived in, or I live in, Buffalo, New York. I expected to have the same experience in my home state as I did in Nevada. I could not be more wrong. New York did not recognize any of my medical issues as a qualifying condition. I shared my experience with the workers' comp doctors, and immediately I was told I was a drug user and cannabis had no medical benefit. I was told if I smoked cannabis, I was just getting high. I became hopeless again and went back on traditional medications. At the end of 2018, New York approved chronic pain as one of our qualifying conditions for medical marijuana, and I was able to get a card. Unfortunately, the quality of medicine in my home state was low, and I found myself again disappointed. Thankfully, I had friends in Canada who allowed me to travel to their homes and experience Canadian cannabis. I learned how cannabis could help me with my chronic pain, anxiety, and depression, and cognitive function challenges. I became a medical cannabis refugee in Canada because of the access to so many specific products that helped me find relief. It helped my symptoms so much, the entire plant, including minor cannabinoids and terpenes. Cannabis saved my life. And because of this, I am loud, proud, and passionate at advocating. I love it. I am normalizing the conversation surrounding cannabis as medicine. I have learned so much, and I believe I was chosen for this journey to help others discover cannabis as medicine for their symptoms, especially for people dealing with invisible illnesses and mental health challenges. Doctors are taught 
are not taught about cannabis as medicine. There is still a massive misconception regarding cannabis as medicine, and I am just one person with a success story trying to change the world and get safe access to plant medicine for the masses. Cannabis connects my dots and allows me to have the quality of life I never imagined. The plant is my passion, and I want to educate folks to look at it without fear and to help people live their best lives. Great, great cool. story. Yeah. Great, great read. So happy for for um, this to come out and Miss Lolly to really find medicine through cannabis, mm -hmm. as we've been talking about in the last couple articles. You know, yeah. so it's just get more and more. So it's amazing. So connecting the dots, it's amazing. Very cool. Oregon regulators recall cannabis due to arsenic contamination. It's crazy. New, uh, new Oregon testing protocols turned up levels of arsenic in a batch of cannabis flour that pose a risk to public health, regulators said. That's just nuts. I mean, to worry about arsenic in your, in, in your medicine. Missouri instituted statewide cannabis banking law. That's great because we can't even fucking get the banking law done in this whole entire country for the cannabis industry it's terrible and missouri just flips the switch it's amazing uh also missouri did 121 million in june that was their numbers they're just killing it and here's the another thing i read missouri is selling four million dollars worth of, ma of marijuana per day on average four million dollars a day <sighs> crazy a lot of money for people to make yeah I mean, these MSOs that are going to go in there are going to try to take it all, but I hope not. I hope it's family-owned businesses, private-owned companies that take care of their employees that are making the money. Yeah. There's almost 200 dispensaries that are med rec in, in Missouri, too. So I didn't know this. I knew, it was, I knew it's been around for a hot minute, but Safe Banking Act turns 10 with little fanfare. It's just crazy. We, we still can't get it passed. Hmm. <laughs> They've been trying. I don't think they're trying hard enough. For this to be a 10-year, I mean, come on now. You're putting a lot of people in danger. A lot. Be like Missouri. <laughs> Man, it's nuts. I just... <sighs> Massachusetts, though, set a record in June. $151.8 million in sales. Little old Massachusetts. Hmm. Killing it. Killing it. Illinois in June, had one of the best months. Um, it was up 3% from May and uh, 137 million. It's one of the best months to date. Hmm. Yeah, so December being the best of last year. But still 137 million and people are complaining there's not enough money being made in this state on cannabis. <laughs> it's here to do a billion dollars. And there's more companies coming right behind it that are going to get a piece of this pie. It's not all going to go to the first 50 that were here. It's going to get everyone's going to get a little piece of this pie. So I'm kind of excited to see what happens. It's going to be a shit show for a hot minute, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the June numbers are in, and Arkansas medical cannabis sales continue to set records. According to the State Department of Finance Administration, patients spent $141 billion to purchase 29,000 pounds of medical uh, medical marijuana so far in 2023. Little Arkansas, killing it. Just medical program. Uh, some review I read, cannabis uh, celebrity cannabis brands are dominating California market. Why? When you should be going to... The people that have been in the industry in, in California for a very long time that probably grow way better weed and you know where it's coming from. So, I mean, just it's just sad to see a lot of the legacy cannabis growers just not getting the recognition they deserve. Um, Maryland's booming cannabis market poised to reach a billion dollar status. <laughs> Maryland, oh my gosh, killing it there too. Maine reports record-breaking adult-use cannabis sales in June at uh, 18.4 uh, million. Little old Maine, killing it. Crazy, right? Michigan sets a record in June. This blew me away. This blew me away. 
Michigan cannabis sales rose 6% in June from the uh, the longer May to record a $260.8 million. On a per-day basis, sales grew 8.8%. The growth of 39.2% from a year ago was up from 31.9% level last month. $260 million? Crazy. I mean, okay, June is when Michigan, the whole state is popping. You got the whole upper UP, Traverse City, all everyone's coming into their homes. They're coming in from out. I mean, Michigan blows up in the, in the, from May till August. I mean, that state is banging with tourists. It's a beautiful. I mean, you got all the lakes. You got all. The, I mean, it's just amazing that state. Okay, that's a lot of fucking money. I mean, there is a lot of dispensaries too, but I mean, like six hundred and fifty or six hundred and seventy dispensaries now in, in Michigan. But that's a lot of fucking money for yeah. one month. This is great. Uh, the, uh, the, a Native American tribal uh, medical cannabis dispensary may become the first to launch in Minnesota recreational market uh, following a vote this week by the Red Lake Nation. Good, I hope so, because August first, Minnesota's getting ready. Uh, I showed you this video, Mrs. Weed Man. That company, Mary Med. And, and uh, did a protest cannabis industry tax laws with its mm -hmm. own Boston weed party. <laughs> that was pretty great. <laughs> They're uh, they're trying to uh, protest uh, the 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 section 280e of the Eternal Revenue Service Code, which the group claims burdens cannabis companies with paying significantly higher taxes than most U.S. businesses, often resulting in higher product prices for consumers. Section 280e prohibits companies from deducting ordinary business expenses associated with the uh, trafficking of a Schedule One or Two substance, said John Levine, CEO of MaryMed. Cannabis is still unjustly classified as a Schedule One, that creates a barrier to the growth of the legal cannabis industry in this country. And they went on this big ship, went out in the ocean, they threw a bunch of empty weed boxes, and then I heard they collected them back after it was over. But, yeah, they're all dressed in, like, the colonial time era costumes and stuff. I, yeah, it was late night when I showed you that video. It was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. um, good for them. Uh, but, I, I mean, here's... I like that they did it, but this is not just about throwing weed or fake boxes of weed overboard. You made a stance... You showed some some character and some balls, and I love it. But this is uh, this is the United States of America's issue, and this is everybody needs to be on the same page with this. If you want to get good weed for a good price and not be ripped off by the government, who is putting laws in the place, but they can't get banking safe banking going on. But they they want their money, you know. They want the tax. They're writing the laws, and they're not doing anything about it. Um, Meta, who owns Facebook, Instagram, and the new Threads, which I, I have an account and I just like, oh my God, it's just another Twitter. Uh, and do I need another social media in my life? You know, kind of thing. But we'll allow limited CBD and hemp advertising on apps like Facebook and Instagram. Very limited. I'm like, this is like so limited. So it's don't get excited because you still lose your account. <laughs> so the war on drugs. Yeah. It is the 50th anniversary and the DEA <laughs> is celebrating the 50th. the massacre uh, of, of lives, the people yep. in jail, the trillion dollars spent on the war on drugs. And, and, and what are drugs doing? <laughs> Thriving. They're winning. They're winning. winning. <laughs> and we spent uh, taxpayer God. money. Now, don't forget that it's not the government doesn't have a trillion dollars to spend. They get it from right. our taxes. A trillion dollars was spent in 50 years that could have went and helped homelessness, could have helped our veterans, could have helped research on the cannabis plant it could help research all these other things going on and also get people homes mm -hmm. feed all people oh my gosh just devastating the waste that oh. yes go ahead and tell us about the war Here on drugs go. Citing former President Richard Nixon, the Drug Enforcement Administration celebrated the 50th anniversary of the agency's creation and their war on drugs, wrapping up 50 years of failed attempts to curb drug abuse. According to a July 5th announcement, the DEA's tactics are not working. Decades of research indicate that drug use is up in just about every category. Nixon created the DEA to combat the menace of drug abuse on July 1st, 1973. That's just four years after Gallup's 1969 poll asking Americans if they've tried smoking pot, and only 4% said they had. Now that number is up to almost half. Cannabis and hallucinogen use is at an all-time high, a National Institutes of Health supported study reported in 2022. 
In 1973, former President Richard Nixon proposed the creation of a new agency when he declared an all-out global war on the drug menace. Congress heard months of testimony for the proposal and creation of the Drug Enforcement Administration later that year. The DEA integrated narcotics agents and U.S. Customs agents into one effective force. These agents work to remove dangerous drugs from the streets and prevent them from coming across our borders. Police officers in the United States to this day make more arrests for cannabis offenses than for any other drug, according to FBI data. Pew Research notes that in 50 states and the District of Columbia in 2018, 40 percent of the 1.65 million total drug arrests in the U.S. that year were for pot. Crazy. Terrible. The war on drugs presents some ethical questions, too. Its roots and prejudice are reason alone to dismiss the war's successes. By today's standards, Nixon's comments as president are shocking, and the war on drugs itself has been called racist. Nixon's domestic policy chief, John Ehrlichman, admitted, admitted first in 1994 that the war on drugs was specifically designed to target the black community and lies were created about drugs. The, this is a quote. The Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people, Ehrlichman said. You understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be against the war or to be black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and the blacks with heroin and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and, val and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know that we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. End quote. Ehrlichman spoke up about the matter again in 2016. Unfortunately, this bias is clearly evident today, as observed in the way cannabis laws are enforced. Data collected by the American Civil, Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, uh, shows that due specifically to racial profiling and bias in cannabis enforcement, black people are 3.6 times more likely than white to be arrested for cannabis possession despite similar usage rates. That rate goes up 10 times more likely than whites to be arrested for pot in certain states, such as Mon Montana and Kentucky. In the bigger picture, the DEA isn't deterring drug use effectively, according to multiple reports by Gallup. The war on drugs has been raging for decades, said Jennifer Robinson uh, to Gallup in 2002. There is no sign of victory or even concession Although they're swamped with anti-drug messages, kids keep taking illegal drugs, and drugs are getting more dangerous. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's 1999 Youth Risk Behavior, Behavior Surveillance System found that almost half or 47% of all high school students had used marijuana at least once, and 10% had tried, tried some form of cocaine. The DEA was far from the first attack on cannabis. Prohibition effort. That didn't even sound right. I'm really high. <laughs> <laughs> told you to, I yeah. told you to be careful with that. Right? I'm like in my own little zone over here. <laughs> the DEA was far from the first attack on cannabis, though. This is my little adage at the end of this, this article because 50 years is the DEA. But the... Ev this trying to stop and prohibit the use of cannabis goes way beyond Oh, that, way right? deeper, yeah. Um, prohibition right. efforts date all the way back to the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act, which is over 80 years ago. And before that, independent states were prohibiting its use. It's our responsibility as consumers to set the record straight. So let's stomp the stigma and free the plant. Free that plant. Free it. Free it. International news, Luxembourg's Marijuana legislation law will take effect this week, government says. 
a new law legalizing the possession and personal cultivation of marijuana for adults in Luxembourg, officially takes effect on Friday, the government has announced. Yay, Luxembourg. Yay, Luxembourg. They, they did it even before Germany got it done. The Ministry of Justice published a statement about the forthcoming policy change in the official journal on Tuesday, a procedural step that means the legislation will come into force in four days. This comes about a month after Luxembourg's parliament passed a legislation bill making it the second country in the European Union to end cannabis prohibition following Malta's vote to legalize in 2021. That seems so long ago we read about Malta. The law in Luxembourg, which was first proposed by the Minister of Justice and Homeland Security in 2021, will allow adults to possess up to three grams of cannabis and grow up to four plants uh, in a secure location within the private residency. So uh, I hope possession means like outside their home, because if they're growing four plants, they're going to have a lot of weed. So a lot more than three grams. (laughs) So good for you, Luxembourg. Super stoked. Go get them. I can't wait to go out there one day and smoke some home grow. Uh, Parliament passes law to allow industrial cultivation of weed, licensed to be issued by the Interior Ministry of where? Ghana has followed through on its promise to once again pass a law that allows for industrial cultivation of cannabis. The amended Narcotics Control Commission Amendment Bill 2023 will give the Interior Minister authority to issue licenses for the cultivation of the plant. MP said the passage of the bill that will allow the cultivation of the plant for medicinal purposes was important. Ghana's parliament for the second time passed a bill that allows the cultivation of weed or cannabis for industrial and medicinal purposes. Good for you, Ghana. Amazing. Germany Minister of Health unveils cannabis legalization draft bill. Man, you're taking your sweet old time, Germany, trying to pass anything right now. And you've taken a lot of steps back on what your initial plans were. I'm proud of you that you're doing this. But, man, I mean, you could have had this done, like, two years ago i mean quick you're one of the biggest importers of cannabis around the world and you're still medicinal that should tell you something i think this is a great story if you were given a wedding right Mm -hmm. forty thousand dollars and it was weed themed how stoked would you be now knowing that pretty sweet right yeah tell us about it mrs weed man yeah A Waterford couple will have the weed-themed wedding of their dreams after beating out more than 15,000 couples who vied for a $40,000 wedding giveaway. The Greenhouse of Wall Lake, a medical and recreational cannabis dispensary, announced the giveaway in March and attracted far more contestants than it had imagined. That's a lot, 15,000. That's a lot of people. Yeah, couples. Couples. Judges selected Danielle Gerald's and Niall Hunt to receive a wedding reception and ceremony with all expenses paid up to $40,000, the dispensary announced on Monday. With the help of a professional wedding planner, the couple will tie the knot in front of 50 friends and relatives at a festive setup at the greenhouse of Wald Lake on October 5th. After the ceremony, guests will toss marijuana leaves instead of rice at the lovebirds and cannabis-infused cuisine and cake will be served. Choice Labs of Jackson and Treehouse CBD of Wald Lake co-sponsored the giveaway. The couple met while Hunt was in U.S. in the U.S. Navy. He served in combat in Afghanistan and was seriously injured by an improvised explosive device. He also has post-traumatic stress disorder, but has found that cannabis helps him manage both conditions. The process of picking the winner was tedious and painstaking, a news release said. Couples were invited to enter the contest by filling out an online form with a short message telling the judges why they wanted to win. This is a wonderful and incredibly deserving couple, and I could not be happier for them, Jerry Millen, owner of Greenhouse on Wald Lake, said. It was a difficult decision, and I wish we could have awarded an all-expense-paid wedding to all entrants. So, that'll be cute. We'll have to look for a follow-up with Wedding yeah, pictures. hopefully we've forty thousand yeah. dollars for fifty people. That's a lot that's, of money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Usually that's like a two hundred and fifty person wedding. It's gonna be a banger. Yeah, forty grand is gonna get you far. <laughs> some Lots of doobie doobies. <laughs> Rapper reveals truth behind Taylor Swift's attending a weed party. First and foremost, if Taylor Swift wants to go to a fucking weed party and smoke weed, let the fucking woman go out there and fucking smoke weed at a weed party. Sure. Don't give a shit. Man, she's a, 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 it's her choice. So despite much fan speculation, Insider has revealed the truth about what, whether Taylor Swift was at a weed party. 
It's after photos emerged of a singer enjoying a star-studded game of Uno during her downtime in New York City. Speculation first began earlier this week after photographer Kristen Germiso um, uploaded snaps from the night of, uh, to social media. Among the attendees were Jason Sudeikis, Michael Che, and comedian uh, Mike, uh, Mike Berbiglia, all of whom played the classic card game. However, Swifties soon noticed that chef Nikki Stewart was uh, also among those involved in the epic game that night. The culinary expert, uh, expert specialties in producing cannabis-based recipes, with many Swifties questioning whether the anti-hero singer had smoked pot. Some even pointed to the 33-year-old's happy expression as an apparent sign that she was under the influence. So what? However, rapper Questlove has hit back at such, a, such claims in the point, pointed post on Instagram, which shared more images from that night. In the caption, he wrote, I'm the king of Uno. There's no one higher. <laughs> Cole wasn't there. He got fired, reading a lot of gossip of what transpired. He then cheekily added, was not a weed party. They all liars. While the rumors should hopefully stop, it's not the first time that Taylor Swift has been under intense speculation this year. The Grammy Award winner, and she just got, what, her fourth Billboard top top Billboard, so the, the most I think of any singer, four top Billboard uh albums uh pretty good for her despite never confirming the romance the musicians were uh photographer holding hands in nashville that's uh, matt healy um so during the episode the singer made rather uh admission about watching adult films and seemed to laugh at comments made about the rapper ice spice as the scandal continues swift was also heavily criticized for being romantically linked to the 1975 musician um anyway so enough gossip about all that other shit here's my opinion if Taylor Swift wants to smoke weed, she, it's her right. Don't judge her. Judge yourself first before you judge somebody else. Yes, she's a, an iconic figure. If you like her music or you don't like her music, she's known around the world. She's won plenty of Grammys, like I said, about the Billboard charts. But damn it, if somebody wants to fucking smoke pot in their life, she ain't judging you if you're smoking pot. And I know there's a lot of young, uh, young people that listen to her. There's a lot of young, 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 young people that, that love her and... and, and you know, they're but Swifties. She would, but she wouldn't be condemned if she had a beer in her hand or right. a, a glass of wine. And or, if she's doing yeah. it in the privacy of her own home or in privacy at someone else's home, man, mind your own fucking business. It's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. Mrs. Weed Man. Mr. Weed Man. That's the end of the show. Yeah. We'll leave it on the Swifties. <laughs> 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 you got anything else to say, Mrs. Weed Man? Have a great week, everybody. Soak up some sunshine. Get out and enjoy the world. I'm going to segue that over to Mr. Weedman because I'm taking, I'm stealing his words again. That's all right. <laughs> hey, everybody out there in the world, we love you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of the show. Thanks for all the DMs. Thanks for all the love. Thanks for all the just, uh, just getting us to where we're at today. We keep on putting out these shows and you all listen. I appreciate it. And I just, I uh, do too. Uh, you do too what? I appreciate our listeners. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And we appreciate you all out there. We love you. Be kind to one another out there. Peace be with you all. As Paulie always says, smoke smart. Puff, puff, and away. Puff, puff, puff. Check out our cannabis lifestyle brand online at 8decades.com. Our custom smokes and accessories are perfect for your coffee table, bedroom nightstand, or kitchen counter. They're designed for you to show them off. The Canna community is also loving our hemp and cotton blend t-shirts, sweatshirts, scarves, and hats, finished off with our 8 Decades logo. We've got some awesome long-lasting goods that will be your favorite for years to come. 8 Decades, because a ninth decade of cannabis prohibition isn't acceptable.